Rick, is it in Michigan? Yes. Hey, Rick, you're on with Hector and Matt. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Not too bad. Okay, great. Hey, great how can great. we help? Yeah, so I was calling. I was going to call on a vastly different topic. And then watching a lot of you guys' videos, I see that you score like really easy points talking about like slavery in the Bible. Yes, I, I score like, incredibly like easy points that, because the Bible's pro slavery yeah. and slavery's immoral. Okay, so that's that's my point. I think I think I come here to like I think point out how I think you're very incorrect in um, saying that the Bible is pro slavery. Well, um, okay, I can appreciate the fact that you think I'm incorrect. Now I've done an entire video on this that lives out there by himself by itself. Have you watched it? Where all I do is I've watched the whole playlist. The whole playlist. I don't have a whole playlist. I'm I'm not talking about the atheist experience. Oh, I'm talking about um, experience is like the. I'm not talking about the atheist experience. <clears throat> I was talking about my atheist debate slavery video, where I go through and read what the Bible has to say. I well, mm, maybe not. Okay, so what? Okay, let's let's try not to get carried away, so that we don't have to interrupt each other or jump all over. What is it that you think I'm actually wrong about? And then we can look at what the Bible actually says. So I think that you're wrong about the fact that the Bible endorses slavery. And I think what I'm saying is you, you're introducing in the question a particular interpretation on what the Bible says that is not necessary given the biblical data. And so what you can merely uh, curiously, say you say, hang on. Curiously, you say biblical mm -hmm. data. So... Mm -hmm. In Exodus 21, does it yeah. allow people to buy slaves and own them as property and pass them on to their children? Yes, correct. Does it also allow people to beat those slaves yeah. as long as they don't die within a couple of days? Right, right. Okay. correct, correct. So how the fuck can I be wrong when you just agreed that the Bible allows you to buy and own people as property to pass them on to your children because they're your property and to beat them as long as they don't die within a couple of days. That's what I'm saying. Allows me. No, I'm not allowed to do that. It's so, so in the Bible. It says it, it, Wait, it, no, but you just agreed with me that the Bible allows that. Allows who me. It does not allow me. Okay, in Exodus 21, chapter, or, uh, chapter 21, verse 2, where it says, if you buy a Hebrew servant, who is that talking to? Who is you? Okay, exactly. good. So he's talking to, he's talking to the, Moses is talking to the Israelites. So it's okay for the Israelites to own slaves, but it's not okay for you and me to own slaves? Yes, that's correct. That's the stupidest thing anybody's called in to defend slavery with is that the Bible no, 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 says no, 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 that no 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 let me finish and it's not fair let, let me finish my case no I'm talking to okay. say that the Bible which is supposed to be giving instruction to us only allowed Israelites to own slaves is to suggest that on a moral ground it is okay for Jews or ancient Jews to own people as property and beat them but it's not okay for me. And yet nowhere in the Bible no, does it say, okay. no, no, I will hang up if you don't let me finish. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that I'm not allowed to do that. You're just making that shit up. You are using what the Bible says. That's like, there's no difference between thou shalt not do X and if you buy a Hebrew servant. Now you can okay, correct. Can I make my case? I just said, now you can correct me. Stop whining and get on with it. No, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to speak, so I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything, so I'm really grateful. So what I'm saying is, if you look at the biblical data, there are laws that apply in some places in the Bible that don't apply in other places, where people are commanded to do things at a certain point, and other places are not commanded to do it. Agreed or not agreed? I'll agree. Okay, good. So my starting point is like, not everything in the Bible is true. So how, oh, what do you mean by that? So I'll give you an example. In the book of Job, for example, the friends of Job, they come, they say things. And at the end of the book of Job, God comes and says, everything your friend said about me is incorrect. That I don't need you to, like, I, hang on. I don't need you to mm -hmm. defend the notion. I don't need you to defend the notion that everything in the Bible isn't true. I already accept the notion that everything in the Bible isn't true. My point was that owning, is owning another human being immoral? Yes, it is evil. Hang on. So. Hang on. 
Was yeah. it always immoral for everyone? Yes. Then the Bible advocates for something that you just acknowledged was immoral. Even if you think that the Bible only allows the ancient Israelites to own people, the Bible still allowed something that you and I understand is immoral and was immoral then. Okay, so like, do you would you allow Christianity, or would you like make it illegal? If you're I'm not, illegal. I'm not trying to make any religion illegal, but slavery should be illegal. Why do you keep deflecting? You, you just you, no, no, no. You just acknowledged that it would be immoral in ancient times for Israelites to own other people as slaves. And yet the Bible, even under your twisted little massaging to try and make it seem nicer, advocates for those people to own. So your Bible is advocating for something that you acknowledge is and was immoral. Okay, can I ask you a question? I, I don't know. Are you going to acknowledge a point or are we just fucking waiting for your turn to talk? I'm going to illustrate why I think your question is is incorrect. Like you're making an assumption in the question. You're sliding in. No, no, I'm not making an assumption. No, sir, I'm not making. I'm not making an assumption. I'm not making an assumption in the question. I'm using your admissions against you. I'm sorry that logic doesn't work in your favor. But if you acknowledge that it is and always was immoral for anyone, including Israelites, to own slaves, and you acknowledge that the Bible permits Israelites to own slaves, then you are acknowledging that the Bible is advocating for something that is immoral, correct? No, the error is to- No, to sir, allow you don't get to say no. I just pointed out a logical argument where you are simultaneously accepting this conclusion and then claiming it's not valid. You have abandoned reason. Here, let me try it again. Is it immoral for people to own other people's property? No, it's not moral. Uh, well, that's what I said. It's it, okay. So you're saying it's not moral. Was it ever moral for anyone to own another human being's no. property? No, Matt. Okay. Does the Bible permit people at some point to own other people as property? Yes. Then, therefore, the Bible permits something which you acknowledged is immoral, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. That's all I've ever said. Agree. Don't call in and tell me I'm wrong and then agree with me. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I... No, no, no. You called in to tell me I was wrong, and you just proved you, that you agree with me. No, look, look. But let me tell you, let me tell you. But ergo, what is the therefore? Because you would follow up and say, that means that God is immoral. No, I didn't say that. I said, did the, why, why can't you listen? Did the Bible advocate for, permit something which you just acknowledged was immoral? And the one and only answer is yes, which means what the Bible has to say about slavery is in fact immoral. I make no judgment on God because there's no God for me to judge. All I can judge is what the Bible says. And I've told people and read people what the Bible says. And you've now agreed with me about what the Bible says and agreed that it's immoral and then flatly tried to deny that it's immoral. No, okay, I never deny that slavery is immoral. The point that I'm making is you said multiple times the Bible advocates for slavery when it, it does. legislates it or allows it, which Oh my god. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm it. not I, I don't care. Let me but here, here this is really question. simple. This is really simple. Does what the Bible in Exodus twenty one, Leviticus twenty five, et cetera, does what the Bible advocate with regard support, allow, permit, endorse, pick the fucking word you want. Does the Bible's position, is the Bible's position on slavery immoral? No. <laughs> ah, so no, let me explain, let me explain. Nobody That's fucking interrupted you. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm getting ready to hang up on you though, because you are a dishonest interlocutor. So if you have a point, make it like, make it. Okay, but will I be able to make it without interruption? Please. No, as a matter of fact, you don't get to make it at all if you, if you, if you try that one more time. Here's the thing. I'm going to say one more thing, then I'm going to let you talk, and what you say determines whether or not you get to continue. You ready? Yeah. You agreed that it's never and never was morally acceptable for someone to own people's property. You also agreed that the mm -hmm. Bible, in okay. fact, does permit someone at some point to own people as property. Mm -hmm. That means that yeah. the Bible is advocating for something which you acknowledge is immoral, but when asked whether or not the Bible ab uh, allows for something that you think is immoral, you say no. Please resolve that conflict. Okay, okay.
So, so people are going to go back and watch the wording because that's not the exact wording you use. So I'm a bit of, so I think the difference is this. So the Bible's position on slavery is not immoral, but it allowed something immoral. And the reason is a decision can only be evaluated given the, the set of possible decisions being made. So you're choosing the lesser of evil, the lesser of two evils is the moral decision, even though the decision itself is evil. True or false? Do we agree on that? False. And goodbye for your dishonest evil. attempt to try to get away with saying that the Bible isn't immoral when it is, and you've already fucking acknowledged it. Goodbye. Yeah. You see, th this is what I was talking about earlier, how this, I mean, it's, it's obviously not an evidential issue. You can look in the Bible. The Bible pretty much says, you know, it does advocate or whatever word you want to use slavery. But I mean, this is just such a case of motivated reasoning. And for the audience who doesn't yeah. know what that is, it's like deflecting information to come to an emotionally preferred conclusion. Usually it's like to deflect fear, right? Yep. So that just bounces off and then all kinds of, you know, uh, cognitive uh, acrobatics take place to try and justify it. Yeah. Um, to, to quell fear. What is the fear? Fear of being ejected from the tribe, fear of, of, of not having eternal life. You know, that's, that's fear driven, you know, but. So there are people who are going to be upset. There are, there are people who are going to be upset that I didn't allow them to continue. And I want to be able to explain to everybody watching the line of argument that he was going to go on is just that I'll be able to do it much more efficiently and effectively. Is it wrong to take property that isn't yours? Yes. Is it immoral to take property that isn't yours? Yes. Are there situations in which it would, the most moral thing you could do would be to take property that isn't yours? Yes. If it would be, it would be wrong for me to break the window and steal from a store. But if in the window of the store is a defibrillator and somebody next to me is having a heart attack, then all of a sudden the most moral thing I can do is break the window, get the defibrillator and help them stay alive. However, those moral dilemmas where we evaluate something situationally, don't apply when the situation that we're talking about is, is it okay, morally permissible, to own another person as property forever? Property fundamentally denies their freedom. Fundamentally, it denies their autonomy. Fundamentally denies their ability to do what they want. There's not a situation that you can come up with where actually owning someone as property is morally permissible, unless you want to try to come up with one. But what they'll try to do is say, ah, you have to remember, in these ancient times, people really had a choice after a war of whether or not they were going to be slaves to their captors who had beaten them in war or whether they would die. And of course, it would be much more moral to allow them to live as slaves than it would be to allow them to die. Well, that's not necessarily the case, which is why some slaves chose death. And denying them the option to choose that is what's fundamentally immoral. So trying to construct a scenario where you take what the Bible says and try to massage it into, uh, well, it's better than being a prisoner of war. Yes, but you know what else is better than being a prisoner of war? Not being a prisoner or a slave. See, it's a completely dishonest line yeah. of argument where they want yeah. to have their cake and eat it too. And it's and, all- And that's, that's pretty obvious. And it's a truism. It's just, it's yeah. just so emotion driven because if you question that, if you question that morality, you- you questioned your imagined protector and all the the feel good emotions that come with that delusion. So, so yeah, it's it's just uh, <laughs> I could see why this would this would heat you up so much because I mean this kind of this kind of um, moral reasoning is what gave us slavery, you know, and all yeah. kinds of other other inhumanities. Yeah, it's know. um, it's it's a lot, and it's become like a weekly thing, which is why I'm not going to have somebody spend too much time on slavery when we have you here.